This is a tutorial for Olive Video Editor version 1. Olive version 2 is more powerful but a little bit more complicated to start with. After you've downloaded the provided zip file, extract its contents. You can then click on the online video editor folder. If you have a Mac, you'll need to go through the process of running the .app file that's unique to Macs. In Windows, however, you enter the Olive for Windows 32-bit folder and scroll down until you find the Olive Editor executable. If you get an error at this point, please make sure you've extracted your zip file and are running it from the folders. Strange things happen when you try to run a program that's inside a zip file. If at any point in this tutorial your windows start going all funny and you can't see what you're doing, click up here on Window and then Reset to Default Layout. It'll take it back to the way things were. It will be easier to explain what each window is here if you have some clips loaded first. The easiest way to do this is just to drag the entire activity folder over to the projects window. That way you can just expand the list and you can see all the folders present. If you're having trouble dragging and dropping a folder, then click import and navigate into the activity you'd like to do and then select all of the files at once. Up here in the top left is my list of files and sequences. If you drag the first clip down into the timeline window, a new sequence will be made for you, made up of just that clip. If you click it, you'll see that this middle window at the top has a whole bunch of settings for the effects this clip currently has applied to it. Every clip has a few effects applied to it by default. These have to do with the position and size of the clip and its audio properties. Have a little play by clicking and dragging these numbers and seeing what happens. Once finished, you can right click on the yellow numbers and choose Reset to Default to put things back to the way they were. This first clip is actually upside down, so your first challenge is to select the clip, then rotate it 180 degrees. You can click and drag this number, but you can also click and manually enter 180. Once you've done that, bring down clip 2, click on it, then rotate that one by 180 degrees as well. The two clips we have make up the first bit of a short scene that teaches you how to cut on the action, which means hiding the fact that there are two separate clips by having them meet at a place when action is happening in the scene. Often when you film, you end up with extra footage behind and in front of the bit you really want. One way we get rid of this in Olive is by dragging the timeline indicator along until you find the time you want. I want to stop this clip just before I leave the frame, which is about here. Then you move the mouse to the start or end of the clip and then drag it to the time indicator. My next clip has a bit at the beginning that I don't need, so I'm going to trim that one too. Again, by dragging my red timeline indicator to the correct time. Then dragging the beginning or the end of my clip back to that point. Now that it's trimmed, I can drag it against the first clip and click play to check my edit. Congratulations, you just made your first cut. The action we cut on was me sitting up, leaving one clip and entering another. I'll now drag in, rotate and trim each clip, cutting on a chosen piece of action. Just remember, always select the clip that you want to work on or else the effects you change up here won't be for the clip you're trying to fix. Even though I'm looking at clip 3, if I have clip 2 selected, the effects do nothing because I'm currently changing clip 2. The action I'm going to cut on here is me leaving the frame, which happens about here. So I'm going to drag my red line to that point and then drag the end of my clip to the red line. Oops. 
coming down the stairs is a good place to start this clip. So I'm going to drag the front of my clip to the red line and then look at my edit. There's still a little bit of stuff at the front of clip one that I don't need. So I'm going to trim that out too while I'm here. I can then select all the clips by pressing Control and A, or by clicking over here and dragging a rectangle around all of the clips. Now I'm going to continue with the rest of the clips. A good place to cut in the action for clip three is when I open the door. If I currently have all three clips selected, when I try to trim clip number three, they all get trimmed together, which I don't want. So make sure you click off of your clips and then onto the one that you want to trim. Opening the door will be the other side of that clip. So I'll trim it to that point and bring it in and have a look. I think closing the door is going to be another good point. So just as the door goes black, I'll trim it to that point and bring in clip five. The door shuts here, right there. So I'm going to drag the front of my clip to that point. Now I'm going to have a look at clip six to see what kind of content is in there and where a good place to cut is. So since it's the top view, I think a good place to cut would be just as the water starts coming out of the bottle. So I'll trim that part to there, and I'll trim clip five to just when the water starts. And bring them together. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at clip seven. The actual thing I'll cut on here is me finishing pouring the water and putting the bottle down. So at that point there, I'll trim the first part out and I'll look back at clip six and just here when I lift the bottle away, I'll trim the rest of that away too. So now my scene looks like this. Let's have a look at clip eight. I think a good place to cut that last clip is just as I start lifting the glass. Just there. And I'll go back to clip seven. And just as I start lifting the glass, I'll cut there. So now let's look at our whole sequence. Great, that flows pretty well. We do have one last file here called Sound Effect Burp. If you drag that into your timeline beneath, beneath the audio of your clip, we can try to line it up with the sigh to make it sound like a very loud burp. <laughs> it came in a little early then, so to get a better view of this, I'm going to zoom in on my timeline, 
by pressing the little magnifying glass here on the left. I can see there's a little bump in the audio here, which is when I side. So if I drag the burp sound effect, so the large part of the burp coincides with the bump in the audio here, that should sound a lot better. We don't need that last bit either, so if I zoom out, I can trim the last part there. And let's watch the whole thing from beginning to end. Beautiful. Before you export your project, make sure you save it in case it crashes by clicking File and Save Project As. Once you've done that, click File again and Export. You can leave pretty much all of these settings as they are here. Just change this quality setting to be something more like 20. Make sure the audio and the video are both ticked here. And at the top says MP4. Then click Export. Save. And then your video will render.